There you go. Okay, thank you. Moving along here into our first area. Um, yeah, so we are talking about this faculty program and it's part of a larger team in the Make WordPress community. Um, this is the community that works on the open source software, WordPress, um, contributing to its success. Um, and the ways that we do in the training team is by teaching people how to use, extend, and contribute to, to WordPress through synchronous, like we're doing today, and asynchronous learning. That asynchronous learning portion happens on this site, learnwordpress.org, which I'll just quickly click here. And um, a little preview is we're given this site a facelift very soon, so <laughs> stay tuned for that. Um, but that's part of the work that we do here. We do this through creating things such as lessons, courses, um, video and transcripts, and these online workshops like the one you're on with us now. Um, we also have some goals here that I just wanted to share with you. These links are available in the slides I shared, and I'll also share them in the chat right now. But basically, in a nutshell, we are trying to ensure and assist and empower people to use WordPress to the best of their ability. And the way we do that is be within the team, we have a contributor ladder. And this ladder, oh, thank you for sharing the slides again, Laura. This ladder essentially shows a pathway for contributing to our team. Every team will have its own different way of contributing here. Um, and there's many teams. So if you like marketing, there's marketing, there's design, there's development, if you're more development focused. Although we do have development uh, things we like to tackle together in the training team. Um, but this is our main goal. And so this is all volunteer led. Some folks do have sponsorship through companies and there's a whole program for receiving sponsorship as well um, that I'm not gonna talk to you about today, but <laughs> if you're curious, uh, you can find me later. I'm happy to chat with you. Um, but for the training team's purposes, we like to define our ladder through those five roles that we'll go through in more depth. Um, and you can occupy a content creator role, which is creating videos, transcripts, um, any content needed to be published on Learn WordPress or shown in an online workshop, a content translator. So if you know any other different languages, you are helping um, localize that content into your native language or another language that you know, so we can spread this information more widely across the globe. Editor, so these folks help the content creators and sometimes the content translators to make sure that the um, like grammar format is looking great. And they'll also help triage feedback if someone you know goes through a course and they're like, hey, this part was uh, maybe wrong or needs an edit they'll log that and maybe edit it as well. Subject matter expert, that is someone who essentially, if you are very well-versed in a topic, you will help folks like the content creators to fill in the blanks as needed. Um, and then administrator, such as myself, is like kind of like the backbone of the behind the scenes, I'll call it. So we're kind of like in our... Um, in our mailing system, if we get inquiries, we're taking care of that. We're helping push projects forward. And where the faculty members sit in this ladder is in the leading portion. So you'll see we go from connecting, engaging, performing, and leading. You can be at any point in this ladder, and any point is great, by the way. You don't have to just continuously climb the ladder, um, but we did want to show the pathway of what you it would lead to if you would like to pursue uh, another stage in the volunteering. And to be clear, you do not need to be a faculty member to contribute to these areas. Uh, we do get a lot of questions like, hey, can I even do this? I'm not a faculty member. Um, if you are a, tra a training team member, you can still perform these actions. Um, some of them might require certain access that only faculty have. And that's when maybe you're like, hey, I want that access. I, I Maybe I'll climb that ladder. But otherwise, you are totally welcome um, and can be mentored to contribute to any of those areas without having to um, go to the faculty member status. 
However, I do want to be clear that there are a couple things you will need in order to contribute in general. Um, and one is you need a WordPress.org account. I have a video attached. You'll need to join the Make WordPress Slack. That's essentially where Laura, Tracy, and myself like live when we're chatting through certain topics. Um, we have the training team meetings there. That's where you can also get help from other training team members. So it's really great to join us there. And it's asynchronous too. Um, just chatting, people have their own system for responding, um, but that's a, the way for us to stay connected. GitHub as well. This is what we use to basically manage a lot of the work that we're doing. And I'll be going through it a bit more in the slides, what that GitHub looks like. If anyone has questions about our processes in that regard, and we have more time, I'm very happy to give like a full rundown of our GitHub as well. And then lastly, the training team site, which I will click into, I didn't click into before. But this is basically our site where you can follow the latest news about our team, this is where we post about our focus areas. You see our, our goals for 2024. We have discussions here as a team about what changes we could make or contribute to or just things we could do to better the work that we're doing. We also list the projects we're working on. And you'll also see that we have notes from our weekly meetings here too. So that's one of the best ways as well, especially if you don't want to get involved with Slack, um, to just keep up to date with what we are up to. And I do have a cheeky link to our onboarding guide, which has all of this lovely information, and I'll link this here. Um, it tells you how to set up all of these things and more, um, but these are just the basics I wanted to flag with you all. So on to the faculty program. What separates the faculty program from, or being a faculty member from being a training team member is that faculty members are also more dedicated to continuing the work. So, you know, it is all volunteer run what we're doing here, but there are some folks that are able to more consistently contribute. And so being part of the faculty program means that you are able to dedicate um, a certain amount of time per week, per month, and in a reliant and consistent manner to help us progress our goals. So that's another differentiator. And it doesn't mean that you're not doing more or less of your training team member, but there is just a bit more expectations that we have for you if you are in the faculty member role. It also kind of gives you a little bit of like, um, I don't know, I don't like prestige to be in this program too, because you are seen as a mentor as well within the training team. So people look up to you, people will ask you questions. So um, it is important for you to be present and be doing the work if you were to get yourself involved with this role in particular. Um, but as we know, volunteers, we are sharing our time. So I just wanted to make that clear as well. And to date, we currently have 28 active members. We have the, um, the faculty program page as well, though, which links out to a spreadsheet, which also shows like the inactive members. Um, so there's been already since it was born, I think two years ago now. Oh my goodness. My, our baby is two years old. Um, but there's already been a good rotation of folks too. And, and it's healthy to have a rotation. So there's always fresh faces and perspectives. Um, but we've held strong at about 28 to 30 members uh, in any given year who are active. So I did want to deep dive a little bit more into what each role does. And there are specific pages involved with this as well. But Sorry, I know this is very text heavy. <laughs> you can read it or I'll, uh, I'm not going to read it, but our administrators help to maintain the bones of our operations, uh, ensuring that processes and operations are running smooth and routine. And some of the expectations involved with being a, a administrator is just actively contributing to the training team's Help Scout, which is our mail management system or the Learn GitHub repository within the past month. So 
um, one of the things we've implemented recently is just really digging deep into clarity about what it takes to um, do these roles and then what are the expectations to uh, maintain this role for yourself. So we've done all of these um, programs, like the faculty program, are pretty fluid and flexible. We're always updating them. We're listening to feedback. We have feedback surveys. Um, but these are some of the things I wanted to outline specifically for the admin. So a bit of what that could look like. I've just opened up here on the left-hand side a project thread that we have. So one of the things an administrator could do is help us stay on top of our projects. Um, and I'll actually open this up here so you can see a bit more of what that looks like. But we'll usually have an overview, talk about who the project members are, the timeline. And you're probably thinking, isn't this open source? This is so like coordinated. <laughs> but I think it, it still helps to not just treat this like as a job, but something that's accomplishable, right? So we have made strides in the training team as well to implement these like DRIs, these directly responsible individuals and have a timeline so that we can see the work that we want to get done, get done. Next up, we have content creators. Um, they're people who contribute new content or even updated content to learn WordPress. And um, yeah, this can be in the form of tr transcript creation. Sometimes we have folks that don't wanna do a whole video plus the transcript. Maybe they don't have, um, maybe they're a little video shy, they don't wanna record it. So there are folks that just do the transcript and then we have folks that are able to do the video. There's folks that are able to do both, um, but essentially it's flexible in that regard. Like whatever you can contribute to create the content is what we are happy to um, explore with you. So the expectation for a content creator would be to actively contribute to various content related tasks such as writing, recording, editing or facilitating um, content creation within the month. And I will link the area of responsibilities for content creators. I'm also linking a board, which I will jump into a bit more detail in a moment, but so maybe don't open it now. It might look overwhelming, but I will, I will jump into that, I promise. Um, and here's just like a preview of what a piece of content could look like. In this instance, um, we are moving away from this tutorial like thing, but it could be this video tutorial that's telling people how to um, use the new 2024 theme. Um, and they'll create the video, they'll put subtitles on there, and they'll write this transcript as well. Next, we have editors, and the editor role is really complementary to the content creator role. So they will help ensure that the content is ready for publication um, by you know reviewing for accuracy of the content, grammar, instructional effectiveness, accessibility. Um, and once they've done that, we can mark it as ready for publication and it will be ready to be received um, to learners. So editors will lead, lend their expertise to the editing process by collaborating with content creators, subject matter experts um, within the month is their expectation. Okay, and now I'm gonna double back quickly to that link of that board. So this is a board that we have in GitHub and it's called the Content Development Board. This is where a lot of our content creators and um, editors live essentially. Uh, you'll see here the ready to create. So if you're a content creator and you are just like, hey, I just want a topic that I can pick up and, and run with. This is the um, column you would want to be in and you can pick up if you know how to migrate copy or clone a site for example 
and you're able to write um, a lesson about that, you would basically assign this to yourself and move it to this draft in progress stage. You'll see we've got quite a few drafts in progress worked on by various people. And once you're done with your draft, it becomes ready for review. And this is where an editor gets tapped in. They would be able to review the content for that um, grammar accuracy, the context, context and content, um, just make sure that it's ready for the publication stage. So we work in stages together here. And the way we communicate is through um, GitHub, there's a commenting system, but we also communicate in our Slack channel, which is why it is important to also be involved there because if I'm a cre content creator and I'm ready to have my um, content reviewed, I'll probably message in Slack as well saying, hey, this migrate copy and clone a site lesson is now done, it's ready for review. Um, we might have folks that are the training team um, just uh, jump in there and try to review it. Or I might also tag the faculty editors and say, hey, can someone from the faculty editing team please help review this? Uh, so there's systems in place so that we can always have a uh, constant motion uh, toward the publication. Another area, let me grab some water, <laughs> one second. Another area where our editors live is this feedback section. And this is feedback that's logged by folks, learners who are on the Learn WordPress site. So you might be looking at a um, video or a lesson and you're like, hey, I think this portion was wrong or, oh, actually this part of the video wasn't very accessible. You have either an enhancement or a fix you want to recommend. Um, there's a feedback form on Learn itself where these are submitted into Help Scout, which is where the admin would then take that information and log it here. And then an editor can come and just double check that one, it's valid and two, what's, what's the next stage. So they'll move it from validation to fix and then either fix it themselves or maybe the original creator will fix it. But that will be the flow of this process so that we're always taking in the feedback and um, iterating on it as well. Okay, hang with me. We've got just two more folks to go through. Um, our subject matter experts, they essentially, you know, work with our content creators and editors to provide expertise in their relevant area. Maybe you are super good at the block editor. You know how to build your own blocks. It's things like that. Um, maybe you know how to build plugins or themes. So they will help shape the accuracy and fullness of the content for the Learn WordPress site by creating with, uh, by collaborating with content creators and sharing their unique expertise in their relevant subject area. And an expectation for a subject matter expert is to just actively provide their specialized knowledge by collaborating with content creators and editors within, a, within the month. So just, you know, always be helping. <laughs> And last but certainly not least, we have our translation coordinators. This one was our latest to form. We originally had those four that I, I shared at first, um, but of course we wanted to make sure that the Learn WordPress site was did have a robust multilingual aspect. And that did require us to create a, a cycle for translation to occur and continue occurring. And so the translation coordinators, they help us with making sure that we are getting those translations published. They tap into their um, local communities to bring people in um, and, and keep in touch with folks as they're going through the process. So they often come from a translation background and serve the team by working alongside those content translate, translators just empowering them to see through their invaluable translations through to publication. 
And their expectation is, is really just that, like actively contributing to the translation efforts um, within that month. So working closely with those content translators and making sure we can get uh, that content to the community that needs it. And here, I just wanted to do a little side by side of what that looks like when it happens um, and is published. So we have here uh, English on the left side and um, I believe Gujarati on the right side. And so not always is the video translated. We definitely want to get to that stage where the video content is fully translated as well. But at least uh, folks can follow along in their locale through the translation of the transcript and through the subtitles. Um, so this is still an area where we as a team know we are growing and we're working on um, expanding, but just having the option already there to expand the, the learning capacity is, is really our goal here. I feel like I'm going to actually go... I, I'll tell you how to apply, but let's go to the Q&A first because I've done a lot of talking and um, before I, you know, do my final sales pitch of, are you interested? You want to apply? Um, I'm curious if folks have any questions about the certain roles or maybe something I didn't touch up on that you were curious about. I can also go over something again. Totally happy to do that or show examples in GitHub. Well, since nobody has any questions, I just wanted to, when um, Destiny shows the GitHub page, that was the biggest thing that scared me, but um, it, it does take a while, but don't let it overwhelm you of trying to find things. Um, I've got some shortcuts for you. <laughs> some, some easy things to make sure that you uh, bookmark things um, and, and, and stuff like that. So, uh, it is pretty simple to uh, once you get the hang of it. And they've added so many automations in the last uh, few months uh, that make it a lot easier to use also for people who are not tech wise. And I am not a techie in that sense, so. Hi, Destiny, this is Tinu. Uh, I have a question around, um, yes, I'm looking at the GitHub uh, dashboard learn RWP content. So if, uh, say I was interested in participating uh, on the content team to review tutorials, would I, uh, I, I'm assuming after going through the onboarding and so on, uh, then how do I uh, say pick up a tutorial to review? Are the avatars that I'm seeing right now, are these of the reviewers or the tutorial creators? Oh, uh, you are muted, I believe. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I was just saying, yes, that's a great question. Uh, let me just pull one up here. So I know Wes is a, is a content creator and he would be the original signee creating it. And so right now you'll see on the right-hand side for reviews, we try to have three people review. So right here, it says the review stage is first review completed. And we want to get them to the review complete here. So if you're here and you're like, hey, I want to help um, review a, a piece of content, first looking at the stage it's in will be helpful because uh, then you know, okay, there's, there's still two more reviews that need to happen. And then they'll have 
links to um, the, or not links, sorry. This is their checklist as a content creator. But down here, you know, Wes, five days ago, he has this video. Um, I believe what did happen is in Slack, he was like, hey, this is ready. Please review it. But if you're just looking here, you can just see, okay, the video is posted, probably needs a review. And we can see here, Tina has jumped in and laid down a review here for this tutorial. So that's one. So if you were like, hey, I, I think I can review this as well, you can jump in and there's a checklist for reviewing as well. That is here. So um, post reviewed for grammar, spelling, et cetera. And I believe there is on our handbook, which I'll just- Yeah, the handbook page has the uh, template for reviewing yes. a, a tutorial. So let me, oh, oh, oh. oh it'd be in tutorials, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So Oh, oh, oh no, I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had it in the same. Am I losing it here? I know we have. Um, I think it's how how to GitHub. Yeah, the how to. <laughs> Where did you go? I know um, Ben is so good at putting all these pages together. Yeah. And I'm like, where did you go? Look under cre uh, creating a tutorial. Maybe that's one. No, it, it should be under something else. It should be under the. Well, Tina, this is obviously a really good question. And <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't need to have bump anyone. Link up. I know it's kind of a little silly because I know where it was before. Hmm. Oh. oh, how to how to guys. And then there's guidelines for reviewing content. Can I just not? I must. Not yeah, have... it's right there. Fourth one down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, guidelines. Oh. One more. Yeah. Oh, OK. <laughs> Phew. So as you can see, the team is a work in progress. <laughs> Finding these things is how we, we get better here. Um, but essentially, as a reviewer, you could follow these guidelines for reviewing the content. And these guidelines, I'm going to link to you here in the chat. Yeah, and just scroll down a little bit more and you'll see the templates. Yes. So what you would do here is copy. And I'll use that issue right here as an example. Paste. I'm not going to press comment, but you can preview here to see what's going to happen if I were to do that. And so um, you could just say, hey, I'm going to pick this up, comment with the checklist, and then go through the checklist to aid with your review. And if you are confused on any of these steps, don't worry. Um, you can complete as much as you're capable of and um, ask questions. Your your view your review will still count even if you can't complete the whole checklist. Um, I know it can be daunting, but um, we can try your best, and also we will help if there's any confusion around the tasks. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm just also curious with the tutorials in in backlog uh, in QR. These topics coming from the community or they've been brainstormed or ideated by the training team? In the ready to create? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this column has a lot of history. I will say we've done, there was more than a hundred before, and I'm surprised it's only at 93 at this stage. Um, but a lot of them were either from training team members or community members. And I will be honest and say that we're, we're moving, I kind of hinted, oh yeah, the, the learn WordPress site is getting this facelift. There's a lot of changes that are going to be happening to our content. Um, we surveyed the community and found that most people are watching the video tutorials or taking courses, and they're not really looking at things like lesson plans. So we are shifting away from lesson plans and 
tutorials and the way they're done now, um, they're going to turn into lessons, which will have the video component and the transcript. Um, and then what we're aiming toward is because there's still folks I want to teach at meetups about certain topics is having a kind of teacher's notes section in the course itself. So that would kind of take the place of the lesson plan where the teacher could open the notes and then be able to teach from that perspective. So there is a shift here, and that might make a lot of these topics obsolete, especially as new releases come. Um, so another part of that project is to deprecate and migrate and focus on really the most relevant uh, materials to date. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Will you be archiving? the lesson plan content? Because that's what I started looking at first. I'm just, I, I find it fascinating. I was just curious. Yeah, so I would love for you to uh, engage in, in our conversations there. We don't have yet a migration deprecation plan. So what will happen is um, essentially at the relaunch, the lesson plans will still be there but it won't be accessible in that it's not going to be in this menu bar, for example. So we do recognize there's a lot of great work that went on in that. And that's why we want to be able to move them into the teacher's notes. But yeah, at this stage, we're not just going to uh, like unpublish them and, and uh, not have it accessible, but it won't be the highlight of learn going forward. Right. You're not going to grow it. Right. You'll just have. Yes. Archive. Yeah. Oh, OK. I I know because we got into archiving what how to archive work. Like, do you want to preserve it mm. so you don't lose the work or yeah. do you not care? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I can I know about archiving using like the Internet Archive or other tools. If that's helpful. I don't know. Is that if that's even part of this? conversation or not so it definitely can be and I think the most the thing we want to be most conscious about is not confusing learners because even if we put it in our archive it might be out of date so right. that's mm -hmm. another conversation we need to have within the team of you know if we do want to leave it it's fine but then we do have to be clear that this is not going to be updated and is, is that really serving folks if you know things aren't up to date right yeah but you could, so it might be like a phase out plan. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You could like put it in like the way back machine or something, mm -hmm. you know, for historical purposes. So you can see, preserve your, the efforts, I guess. Anyway, um, I have to look. I've noted that. <laughs> Part it. Oh yeah. There's other yes. things other than the way back machine to put it in. But um, I was just curious so I'm so new to this. I didn't even know this learn WordPress site existed. Um, I mean, I've been, yeah. I just started using it in August. So I think when I, I think if I'm piecing it together correctly, this is, oh, I'm not a coder. So if I'm learning WordPress and I've written my own tutorials or something, this is a way to contribute to the open source part of it. Oh, okay. Absolutely. I like it. All right. I think I get it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely it. And um, another change that we've done recently, because we're trying to move toward like a more modern site look and um, practices as well, is all of our videos are also uploaded to YouTube, the WordPress YouTube. So that's another area where if you create a video, for example, or even an online workshop, your contribution will be seen by billions, you know, because YouTube is a <laughs> pretty big of people in the world. So um, that is something also to think about as a content creator of how you're, you'll also be given back to and acknowledged within the, in the space. Just the one thing to remember is that, um, you cannot promote yourself or your own personal business. So that's why there's a distinction between you contributing to the open source project, um, which is a lot different than you might see a YouTuber who is doing 
uh, content creation, making money from it and stuff like that, uh, they wouldn't be able to, uh, they would be able to do tutorials, but then they have to take off their branding and stuff like that. So um, those are stipulations that are within the uh, handbook page. Diana also has a good question in the chat, which I was just like furiously trying to respond to. So I'll read my comment and also post it. Um, Diana asks, is anyone on the team dedicated to reviewing old content to see if it's out of date print um, and where it needs to be updated? So yes, absolutely. We focus that kind of work around new releases. And so the new system, literally brand brand new <laughs> that we're coming up with now is um, we'll have a couple folks that are close to either the release or understand the features that are coming out. Um, they'll create one GitHub issue that will list out the changes and also link to the pieces of content that we have created that need to be updated. And so that's why... Um, we love our GitHub because it's it really helps us piece together the content that was created. Um, we still see the assignee, like, is that person willing to come back again and make those edits? Um, and if not, we still have this historical context around when it was created and who did what and what needs to change. Um, so that is how we are handling recent updates. And also with this shift to the um, only courses, lessons, and online workshops, we're really working to shed a lot of things that were just so out of date, we can't really update anymore and have a more manageable process. Um, so that yeah, when folks come, they're not always bombarded with things that are um, out of date. And we actually have a conversation about that that I'm happy to link to. Is that 6.5 discussion? Yeah. When you, okay, saw the checklist, but it, when you, so you give training on how to write, how you want the lesson to be structured. Is that correct? Like, I'm just curious, like we follow if there's any pedagogy that's followed or anything. Yeah. So in our, and we're getting more clear about that actually with the, the lessons, um, for example, like the lesson creation process, this is all outlined in our handbook. However, we do have, um, and most recently, um, our content creators putting on um, like onboarding sessions, like this synchronous one we're having now. So if you have any curiosities um, or, or maybe need a bit more clarity on how to do things, they can help you out. So yeah, we do try to balance the, the written context with onboarding. And I think we do have a recorded online workshop of, of that as well. Um, but yeah, we do help people to get to where they need to go. Um, and also if you're like, I'm not seeing this on the calendar. Can someone please, you know, like have a session on how to create the content? We're always willing to try to put that together too. I have a content question or maybe a top uh, WordPress yeah, feature. Um, and, and this is just around more of the, maybe working with the WordPress APIs. Are there learning paths or even, even if those are kind of um, going away or de being deprecated, as you said, um, is are there resources for those who are interested in learning about say more of the backend aspect of WordPress? Right. Um, yeah. And yeah, I ask this in more of just my own personal professional experience where I realized that what I was doing in the editor dashboard um, was one thing, but then I needed more understanding of what was going on in the back end. And mm -hmm. it's that for me, just from my experience, and I'd be, I'd love for someone to prove me wrong. Uh, it's you know, where I've kind of found this gap in WordPress education or teaching online, just someone to to teach this in a structured, <laughs> concise way. Yeah. 
And yeah, just not like stumbling around the back and trying to figure out what's happening. <laughs> happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Tinu, I want to cry. You're basically saying exactly what we're working towards. So we are creating learning pathways right now. <laughs> um, we're creating user developer and designer learning pathways that take you from beginner to expert in WordPress. And we do have um, a developer one that is being created right now. Um, and we have a little project board for this as well, which you would have access to. Oh, if great. You would like to look. Oh, wow. um, yeah. So we're, we're really working hard toward that vision. That's another sure. thing that we found that people were looking at our site and they're like, where do I start? What am, what am I trying to do here? So we are trying to get more of this outcome project-based content on learn so that people like yourself, like, Hey, I just need to go from A to B in a, in a concise manner, yeah. um, can get that. Oh, that'd be awesome. I'm <laughs> looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> we are tentatively looking to launch that in July. So keep, keep in touch. <laughs> Great. And it's also something you can contribute to if you would like. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Any other questions? These questions have been great. And uh, I'm just so jazzed. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. <laughs> I did. I have so much in my head. I'm going to explore the learn site and then um, read up the materials you've sent today. So thank you. Of course, you're very welcome. Um, then I will just take you through my final, <laughs> my final sales pitch. Um, just a link to apply if you're like, hey, I'm ready to apply to be a faculty member. Um, I just wanted to have this resource available for you. And then if you're like, hey, I want to work my way up to that, please just join us in the training team um, and get started on your contributor ladder journey. Um, Laura, Tracy, and I will be there. There's others, of course, um, over 2,000 people in there, but not everyone's active, don't worry. Um, and so, yeah, we are more than happy to just help you and guide you through that journey and yeah, maybe you'll join us as a faculty member, but we're just also very happy to have you as a training team member alongside us as well. So um, come with your questions, your input. Um, we really would love to grow this together with, with you all. And with that said, just some ways to stay connected. Um, I'll share a bunch of links with you all. If you stumble into that Slack, you can find me at, at Destiny. Um, that's my P.O. P.O. Fox, which is like tweeting Fox in Japanese, is uh, my .org profile. And there's our Twitter and our training team site. And then also content creation, uh, as I kind of hinted at, this, this online workshop we're in right now, you could also host one of these. So if, especially if you're like, hey, I come from an educational background, I wanna talk about how we do things, which would be awesome. We're always happy to learn more. Um, you can check out what other workshops are available and also apply to be an online workshop facilitator. So those are some other options of how you can contribute as well to the training team. So Destiny, uh, this is Tino again. I saw on Meetup that there was a part session to post it as well. Is that a continuation or a repeat of this session? It's a repeat for uh, folks in a later time zone. Got it. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome to come back. <laughs> You'll be like, I know all that. <laughs> oh. Thanks so much. This has been really, um, really informative and yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, I've been Great. just looking for more, uh, just resources out there for learning more about WordPress. Um, I do, I have clients that I work with and yeah. I've just been looking for that, um, 
avenue ways to just deepen in my knowledge of the platform and being able to to do my work more effectively right yeah excellent i'm so glad you you got what you needed out of this <laughs> yeah, <thank you. laughs> All right. Well, let me stop recording. I think that official